For this week's video, I thought I would focus on a topic I get a lot of questions on, which is, how safe is public Wi-Fi? To be perfectly honest with you, not safe at all. And don't get me wrong, there are safeguards to keep your devices safe, but all of these safeguards can be defeated or circumvented by a determined attacker. For the purpose of the demonstration, I'm gonna focus on two elements, surveillance and packet injection, both of which are gonna be perpetrated by a man-in-the-middle attack. So, first things first, I'm gonna give you a little background if you don't already know. Whenever you join a network, whether it's a wired or wireless connection, the router sends your device a message introducing itself as the router. It also updates what's known as an ARP table on your device that lets you know what other devices are also on the network. That way you can do some network communication. The problem with this protocol is that it does not have authentication, which means that any device can literally tell your device that it's the router. This is known as ARP spoofing. So what happens there is that an attacker sits in between your device and the data so they can intercept it, read it, modify it, whatever. If you feel like that went over your head, don't worry, I've got a little presentation uh, to sort of clarify that. And then afterwards, I'm gonna show you a demonstration both in the lab and in the wild so you can see it in action. Well, hello there. Oh, now hang on, I need the password. Cupcake 3463Z, um, lowercase y, underscore, hyphen, and then what looks like an exclamation mark with another Z. Welcome, why didn't you say so? Come on in. Okay, welcome to the network. If you need anything sent out to the World Wide Web, I'm the router, so I can take care of that for you. Oh, oh, I don't mean to be rude. Let me introduce you to my friend. Brilliant. Let me tell you something. I am the router. I thought that guy was the router. Dead guy. He's a nice guy, but he's a fool. I'm a router. Okay, internet, I hear it. You want to do something, you let me know, okay? All right, for the purpose of the demonstration, I wrote a program that uh, is going to be sending those ARP spoof packets for me so that I'm able to capture traffic on the network. And on the right, I've got a virtual machine, which is just going to simulate a user on that network, but it will be the machine that we are going to be attacking uh, today. So I'm going to go ahead and scan the network, and I'm going to point my program to attack uh, that virtual machine. Now, um, little tidbit, I'm only going to be attacking HTTP traffic right now, uh, just for the demo. Uh, there are ways to get around HTTPS, but that would involve me having to show you SSL stripping. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, you ever notice when you go to google.com or Facebook, you always get a secure lock at the top of your browser? That means that that page is encrypted using SSL. So if somebody is uh, intercepting your traffic, then you have the knowledge of knowing that it is coming in encrypted and they can't really read it. Uh, as I said, there are ways around that, but uh, that's a super complex process and uh, it would take another video to cover. So let's go ahead and uh, go into some of those packets. Now I'm going to attack a popular website that I know, uh, which is the Chive. Uh, a lot of people go to it, as you know, but it is not encrypted. So that means I'm actually able to capture all those packets. If you notice, it actually rendered for me first, but that's because uh, the Chive actually is sending me those packets and then my program is sending them to the virtual machine so it's taking a second to get there don't worry i take this to the right place now this page loaded for the user without any problems whatsoever so they're none the wiser they have no idea that anything happened uh, and because i'm getting that data first not only do i get to see it rendered but i can actually start to intercept some of that traffic and mess with it on the way back. We can inject a script. Um, so let me go ahead and do that to give you an example. All right, I went ahead and uh, added this script. So let's go ahead and see it live. Uh, inject it here, boom, lets them know. The chive.com is asking them if they like Astley. If they say okay, uh, it's definitely going to redirect them over to a Rickroll. And by the way, that'll happen no matter what uh, website they go to so long as HTTP. And then lastly, I just want to show you uh, another feature here where I can uh, intercept the images of the website uh, on the way in. So the chive.com uh, will, instead of using its own resources, will actually resources that I <laughs> gave it. So the user would absolutely no idea what was going on. Uh, they think they're going to the chive and they get hit with a crazy amount of uh, Nicolas Cage, which I think is hilarious, but uh, 
funny little prank you can play on somebody. Um, that's definitely a funny prank, but the problem occurs when people, instead of replacing your picture with Nicolas Cage, start injecting your web pages with malicious code or intercepting your file downloads with malicious files. So for the next demonstration, I set up a captive portal. What that is is just basically a rogue network. Uh, it's just a little network on a Raspberry Pi, and what it does is it acts like a network that you've connected to before, like Starbucks or your home or a hotel or whatever. And when you do connect to it, it gives you a little disclaimer that lets you know that I'm gonna be intercepting your traffic, but people rarely take it seriously or rarely read it. So um, as you can see, in like the first 15 minutes of being connected, I started capturing traffic, and uh, I was able to see what some people were browsing. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, definitely subscribe. Um, I'm definitely gonna be posting more stand-up, more uh, magic or messing with scammers and information security type or hacking videos. I'm gonna try and do that uh, every week or bi-weekly if my schedule frees up. Speaking of which, I keep getting a lot of people asking me for hacking tutorials. Uh, I've decided to start a Patreon so that I can post there more regularly and then uh, I can free up more time and then I can spend more time creating content. So if you're interested in learning how to hack or if you just wanna support the mission, uh, definitely give that. Otherwise, I'll see you here.